Last week, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee announced that they were doing a big party policy change that would make it much more difficult for primary wins in the future. Effectively, if you're one of the many consultant companies that helps cam uh, campaigns spend money, reach voters, do advertising, all of that, and you work with someone who is challenging a sitting de Democratic uh, representative, then you'd be blacklisted, and the DCCC and all of the money that they raise would no longer ever be accessible for you. Now, this was obviously heavily criticized uh, afterward, um, but they are standing strong, and they think that this is still a good idea. The chair of the DCCC, Sherry Bustos, was on uh, Morning Joe, and here's what she had to say. We are telling vendors that we do business with, and keep in mind that the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, we will raise somewhere around $200 million over the next couple years. That's a lot of money that we spend with different organizations that help elect Democrats. What I'm saying is if you're in the business of helping elect Democrats, we'll do business with you. But if you're in the, in the business of opposing Democrats who are in office or the seats that we're trying to pick up, then we probably don't want to do business with you. First of all, one of the most obvious problems with this is that this is not going to be a policy that they hold themselves to in particular cases. So if next time around someone wants to, someone who's more business friendly, more centrist, wants to challenge AOC or Ilhan Omar, I have a feeling the DCCC will find some way to work with companies that are uh, helping consult on that campaign. That's a prediction. You can check it in a couple of years. I feel pretty safe making that one at this point. The bigger issue is that this is maddeningly self self-defeating. This is not just screwing over liberals or progressive voters and saying, no, you're going to be stuck with whoever we have, and we're going to try to scare you into submission so that you never actually aim for any representatives who are more reflective of your actual values or will push for the actual policies that you want. It's not just that. I expect that out of the DCCC. But this is also maddeningly self-defeating for the party itself. Again, we say this over and over. Who are the people in the party that are actually driving the conversation, who are pushing the party in the direction that is reflective of what people actually want? They love to say there's like 62 new representatives, but you only talk about five of them. Okay, well, we don't owe those five any coverage. We give it to them because it is earned, because they are reflecting our values, communicating effectively, and pushing for policies that the American people actually want. That is a good thing for the party, not a bad thing, and you should want more of that. You could have more of that, but they are going to make it as difficult as possible. Whatever power they have to exercise over this process, they will exercise to make it so that you won't have another Ayanna Pressley or another Rashida Tlaib. That all of them, maybe they can still run, but they're going to have a lot harder of a time actually communicating with voters and organizing and putting out high-quality ads. Look, that, that's sort of sarcastic. In the end, I think that companies will, will come up that will work with these uh, teams, that will not want to, to work with the DCCC. I think that the DCCC will eventually be seen as a negative thing to have coordinating with your campaign. I am working to make that so as we speak. But the DCCC still has some power, and they are using it in an incredibly corrupt fashion. I just want to read one quote. Representative Ro Khanna, he said, this unprecedented grab of power is a slap in the face of Democratic voters across the nation. It's something even Rahm Emanuel would not have done and is totally tone deaf to the grassroots activists across our nation. Voters are sick of the status quo holding on to power and stifling new voices. They are sick of DC politicians who care more about holding on to power than a true competition of ideas. And that is a competition that is going to proceed regardless. Whatever the DCCC wants, they can try to exercise their power now, but it is only going to hasten the taking away of that power and redistributing it to people who actually reflect the will of the voters. Rokana gets that, the people who have come in through primaries get that, and hopefully they will have more company in the future. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.